Welcome to our Landroid installation guide. There are a few things you'll need to complete this installation, so make sure you have them to hand. They are a rubber mallet or hammer, a pair of wire cutters, and a spirit level will be useful, but not essential. Finally, a measuring ruler is included in the Landroid box itself, but you could use any tape measure if you prefer. Your charging station should be placed within five meters of your outside mains power point, and ideally in a shaded spot. Ensure that the charging station base is placed on level ground. Check with a spirit level to make sure it's level and adjust if necessary. Leave at least 30 centimeters open access on the left side and 80 centimeters open access on the right. That's the side it uses to return to the charging station. Secure the base plate to the ground using the supplied screws and Allen key. Check again that it's level. Now, connect the power cord to the transformer and plug it into the mains. If everything is connected fine, the power LED will flash green for a short time and then go to red. Now, take the roll of perimeter wire and leaving about 50 centimeters excess wire, pass it through the guide channel on one side of the charging station. It makes no difference which side you start from. Open up the cover at the back of the Landroid and insert the PowerShare battery. You'll hear a click when the battery is inserted correctly. Whilst we're laying out the perimeter wire, we're going to leave the Landroid charging. So place the unit on the charging base, making sure it makes good contact with the charging points. And make sure the connecting plates move forward at least 15 degrees to initiate the charge. You'll know the Landroid is charging from a message on the built-in display, which will vary according to your Landroid model. We're now going to lay the perimeter wire. First, we check the wire feeds out in line with the base. Using the supplied pegs and a suitable mallet or hammer, pin the wire onto the lawn surface every 80 centimeters or so. Here, as the lawn edge isn't clearly defined, we'll leave at least 26 centimeters from the wire to the edge. Here, where the lawn is flush with the patio, we measure a 10 centimeter gap to allow the Landroid to mow right up to the edge. There's a handy ruler with the right measurements included with your Landroid. It's a good idea to keep checking that the wire is the correct distance from the boundary and is running parallel. If there's a step or a wall or fence, make sure to keep the wire the full 26 centimeters from the edge. For a right angle turn, you can use the triangle shape supplied to create a perfect turning pattern for the Landroid. Place the triangle shape on the lawn surface and lay the perimeter wire around the triangle. Do this for every outward right angle corner. This won't be possible in a narrow area, such as a pathway. You can curve the perimeter wire in a suitable manner so the Landroid can navigate the lawn easily. Here's a good tip. Every so often, create a 20 centimeter loop in the perimeter wire and peg it down. This will allow you to make minor adjustments later on if the garden boundary changes. Make sure the wire is always in close contact with the ground. Where the wire is raised above the ground, you may need to secure it down with an additional peg. If you have a tree, a shrub, or any other permanent feature, and it's more than one meter from the edge of the lawn, you can create a no-go area with the perimeter wire. To do this, we're going to create an island using the wire. First, make sure that the wire runs out at right angles to the boundary. When you get to the object, lay the wire around the object in a clockwise direction. This is important. You will confuse the Landroid if it's not in a clockwise direction. Make sure the distance between the boundary and the wire is 10 centimeters for a flush edge or 26 centimeters for a raised edge. Once you've laid the wire right around the object, creating a circle, run the wire back alongside itself until you reach the original perimeter wire. You should have created a lollipop shape with the wire. Where the wires are close together, the signal is canceled out and the Landroid will ignore the wire. All it will see is the boundary around the no-go area. When you get back to the boundary, create a right angle, peg the wire, and continue with your boundary. Once you get back to the charging plate where you started, make sure the perimeter wire runs in line with the cable channel on the charging plate. Remove the Landroid from the docking station. If you're happy that the perimeter wire is all laid down and accurate, then next we remove the terminal cover on the base station, ready to connect the wires. We'll start with the outgoing wire, Cut the excess cable and strip the end. One centimeter is enough. Insert the cable into the red left clamp. This one's the out clamp. Now, guide the other end of the cable through the guide channel on the right side, in the same way as before. 
Then, cut the wire, strip it, and connect it to the black terminal on the right. Close the cover. If everything has been connected correctly, the LED should light up solid green. If the LED is red, then something is not right. Check the mains power. Is it on? Check the perimeter wire. Is it broken? Check the wire ends. Are they clamped properly? If necessary, use the manual troubleshooting section to see where the problem might be. Your Landroid is ready to go out on its first mow. Press the start button and put your feet up.